Midday Treat with NAZ Elite, a monthly podcast in which I chat with Hoka NAZ Elite team members, and you'll get a behind-the-scenes scoop on their training, racing, and everyday lives. I'm your host, Eric Sensman. You can find our monthly podcast on SoundCloud uh, by searching Hoka NAZ Elite, and you can learn more about the faces behind the team uh, by visiting their website, nazelite.com, their Facebook page, Northern Arizona Elite, or their Instagram and Twitter, both at NAZ underscore Elite. Welcome to the Hoka One One Midday Treat with NAZ Elite podcast. Uh, I am here for this episode with Scott Fobble. Scott, this is your your first time. I am. Um, yeah. 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 First time on here. So I'm sure you have some butterflies. This is a pretty big deal. Of course. Yeah. Always. Always. <laughs> always. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to have you on. We have you on the, this episode for a particular reason. Um, big announcement what will be today when this comes out, mm-hmm. uh, in a couple of days from now, uh, that you're running the New York City Marathon. Yeah, so today's Saturday, and on Monday we get to announce that uh, I'm going to run New York, and um, you will hopefully be listening to this on Monday, so that <laughs> will make more chronological sense then, but um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited to go to, hope you know, the build-up for New York, and then eventually run New York. Uh, it'll be my first major, second marathon, um, and I'm just excited to, uh, really like test myself over, um, what is like a really iconic course and against a world-class field. Yeah, absolutely. So that gets into some of my, uh, my first question, but yeah, let's walk through New York a little bit, um, in terms of why you're choosing it and so mm-hmm. forth. And then we'll kind of go backwards and, and look at your, your year so far. Um, so you mentioned the, the fact that it's a major, the field, um, what are some of the other you've raced in new york before mm-hmm. right earlier this year um you did the half marathon so i don't know if that was did you have this in mind back when you ran the half marathon in new york um a little bit it was uh it was awesome to feel the energy of like this big city event um and you know finishing in central park is something that uh really can't be replicated right so um we had already sort of talked about New York being a good option for me come the fall. Um, but actually going to New York and running the half really kind of solidified it in my mind in terms of like the environment that I want um, for my next marathon. And how, how does that, so, well, let's stick with New York and then, and then we'll go back a little yeah. further. Uh, it, it's also the case that your teammate will be there with you, Scott mm-hmm. Smith. Yeah, bummer. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. So for those that don't know, although I would think many listeners do, there was an ongoing feud between between you and Scott. Yeah, we are hardcore internet enemies. Yep. Um, That's the best place to be enemies. It is really. Yeah, it's pretty easy to be mad at Scott online. <laughs> uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an arduous an arduous task to prepare with him and train with him. Yeah. I think every day is gonna um, being around him so much is gonna chip away a little bit at my soul. <laughs> Um, on a daily or even weekly basis. Um, and I just don't, I don't see a scenario where we both make it to the line with the same level of like confidence in ourselves and self-esteem as we have now before the hard training really begins. <laughs> right. Now he, he got your number the last, well, the one and only time you raced him in a marathon. Yeah. By what, what was it like 12? Yeah. Seconds? 12 or 13 seconds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has he ever let that down? Uh, no, he reminds me of it pretty regularly, <laughs> but to be fair, like, since I've turned pro, I have a staggering winning record against him. I mean, just staggering. What, what is, do we, do we have an f- official count at this point? Uh, a record? Let's see. I beat him at club cross. Yeah. And then I beat him at the Olympic trials in the 10k. And then I'm trying to think of the next time we raced. Then I beat him at club cross again. And then he beat me at Houston. And then I beat him at u.s cross um and then i we didn't race for a while i don't think after that but i beat him at Cri- the crim last year yeah and then he beat me in frankfurt five. and i don't think we've raced since then so i'm at least up five to two i the 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 
your ability to go back multiple years and mm-hmm. remember your record against Scott Smith just speaks to the level of... Uh, yeah, I have a pretty good memory for my past races, but with Scott, they're really highlighted, <laughs> especially the ones that I've won. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are the ones you want to remember. Um, yeah, so you will again toe the line and I should with say, I did debut in the marathon two minutes faster than he did. So that's like, it true. Took him, it that's took true. him like can't, six or seven right. marathons to get to where I am after one. <laughs> I, so, which I think is, should be noted more That should be noted. That yeah. should be noted. I actually ran into Scott uh, a couple months ago at a pizza shop, mm-hmm. go figure. Um, and I think I asked him something along those lines about his marathon history. And he's like, yeah, I just got it right a couple times. And mm-hmm. a lot of times I just ran slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's had some bad conditions, which is probably like God realizing he's going to run a marathon that day. <laughs> and if God's going to punish one of them, he's got to punish everyone in the race. He can't just make it hot for Scott. So... Um, that's right yeah I mean it was super windy in Frankfurt it's been real hot in some of his marathons so it would you know Boston he runs Boston and it's a terrible the worst weather in Boston's history I don't think that's a coincidence (laughs) so you're expecting terrible weather uh on race day I'm certainly open to the possibility yeah 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 yeah. um well prepare for the worst yeah they say right yeah uh so New York is obviously well it's typically a tactical race I mean they're fairly fast times but um how will that race course differ from your first experience at the marathon in Frankfurt? Yeah, Frankfurt, um, in terms of conditions, Frankfurt wasn't great. It was very, very windy, um, particularly in the first half. It was very windy. We had rabbits, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it was not a spectacular day. Um, but the focus on the focus in Frankfurt was to run fast. Right. Um, you know, we had pacers running 2.12, uh, and the goal was just to see how fast we could do. We could go. Um, New York is a very different. Um, sometimes people run fast. You know, the winners have run in the 207s yep. and 208s. Uh, yeah, generally, so fast on that course. Yeah, generally it's much slower, and mm-hmm. it's more cerebral. Um, it's it, the pace yo-yos. Um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, more tactical in many ways. And uh, I think that's something that I'm looking forward to. Sure. Frankfurt was great. It was good, a good situation where I didn't have to think too much. I could get the experience under my belt. And um, I came away with a really good PR uh, for a debut, which is nice now because I don't have to, I feel like I can take some chances with these tactical ones. Sure. Because I have that 212 under yep. my belt. And I know that time isn't um, the end all be all. There's a lot of things a lot of other like ways of judging a performance, sure. but uh, uh, it's nice to have the 212 in my pocket. Um, and if I can go to New York and PR, that'd be great. But it's nice to kind of throw time out the window yeah. and just be like, let's go get fit enough to run up front, yep. finish as high as you can, and um, we'll kind of figure out what that means afterwards. Well, and you've done that recently. Um, get get fit enough to run up front, mm-hmm. run tactical, see what happens. What comes to my mind is the, the 25K championships. Um, do you think having, well, both at 25K earlier this year, as well as the New York City half where you were fifth, uh, do you think th- that's the sort of experience you anticipate having in New York? And maybe what, if it is, then what did you learn from those races that you think would, would be helpful when it comes to race day? Um, yeah, I think in terms of... Uh sort of how the race played out, I think both of those experiences will serve me well in New York. Um, at the 25K champs, I was very much the aggressor. I yep. think I probably led 24K of yeah. the 25K. Um, uh, but, uh, so that's probably unlikely that I will lead the majority of or the whole, sure. all of New York. It would be great. Um, but really the only place that matters if you're leading is the last couple meters yeah. so um yes yeah, so that's probably not what's going to happen new york city half is probably more similar to what i will experience in ter- in the marathon right. um because that was it was windy it was a little tactical it was a really good field and so i did a lot of sitting in the pack yep um kind of just trying to be in good position and try to um be in contact and i think that's much more similar to what i will um what my goal will be in in new york on sure. november 4th how, how much did those races in particular, uh, did, I'm just thinking in terms of like your level of confidence, had you not, you know, run as well as you did at, at that half marathon in New York or the 25K champs, um, do you think you'd be 
maybe a little less confident um, looking ahead to New York? Or like, like do, you, do you draw some sort of like strength in terms of confidence from those r recent performances? Yeah, the b block before New York City half was really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really specific and we were able to hit a lot of really hard workouts that we kind of, we pushed the envelope on a few of them. And I think had we not, had we trained really hard for a very specific event, training had gone well and then the race didn't go well, that wouldn't have um, instilled a lot of confidence sure. in me going forward. Um, the 25K was kind of the opposite. We had done a lot of track stuff. I'd run Peyton Jordan like uh, right. eight or nine days before. Mm -hmm. um, and the buildup for the 25K wasn't that specific. It wasn't that great. Yep. Um, so to go to the 25K and run really well, um, I mean, I almost came through 13.1 miles in my half marathon PR. Right. I was only a few seconds yeah, off. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Led the whole thing. So that gave me a lot of confidence that I could run well at this long aerobic event, yep. really without a ton of aerobic training. Sure. We've done like two long workouts at kind of half marathon pace or under, and then the 10K were kind of the three workouts that right. we had done leading into the, um, okay. the 25K. So. They definitely give me confidence, but kind of for different reasons. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So leading up to New York, you'll have a couple races. Um, it, uh, you'll run the Great North Half September 9th, and then just a week from now, the I'm gonna I feel like I still don't know how to say the, <laughs> this race. Foul, foul, you can do it. foul mouth. <laughs> yes, foul mouth. The foul mouth <laughs> seven miler. Uh, no, uh, Falmouth. Falmouth. Yeah. There it is. Um, yeah, gonna go out to Boston. Um, or the Boston area next week. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good field. I'm excited to race um, some of those guys, both the Americans who are going, like Lopez Lemong and Martin yep. Hare, um, Lenny Career, and then also some of the international guys. It'll be nice to run against uh, Chris Thompson, yep. um, as well as Callum Hawkins. You know, those are both two really good guys. And then Ben Flanagan is running it as okay. well. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I think it's a good mix of guys who I feel like are very fit, and running really well right now, and uh, and it'll be nice to just stick my nose in it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So in, in looking at the training block as a whole, leading up to New York, mm -hmm. how instrumental or important are the are those two races? I mean, do, do you look at those as like, I'm, I need to do well, or I'd like to do well, because that would be a good indicator of like, where I might be for New York, or like, how, how do you assess these races, you know, leading up to, to New York? I think any time I race, uh, it does feel important. Yeah. But in terms of the big picture leading up to New York, uh, what's really going to matter is how fit I am on November 4th. Sure. So it would be great to go to Falmouth and get a good result. It'd be great to go to Great North and run a fast time. But um, I've done pretty well in the past, c bouncing back after races that didn't go great. Um, and I've done well at like kind of riding the momentum uh, after good races. Yeah, right. Um I think, you know, in the race, it, I do have to sort of tap into kind of the emotional side, but in, um, like, looking back on performances, I think I'm able to kind of uh, understand that that race isn't necessarily a predictor sure. of a future race. Yeah. Um, so it would be great to, to crush them both. Um, Falmouth is really kind of a rust buster. Um, you know, the legs aren't super sharp right now because we've been doing a lot of stuff that's going to prepare us really well for November 4th, yep. where it really matters in uh, New York. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it would be great to crush them. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Right. Uh, and I'll be ready on, on November 4th. So the, the big goal for you, of course, is, is yeah. New York. Yeah. yeah. And we kind of talked about that today. Like, we had a monster session on Lake Mary. It's 24 miles with 20 of it alternating between like five minute pace and six minute pace was the goal ended up being right around five minute pace maybe a little tiny bit under on the ons and then the recovery miles were a little bit slower but okay. i was telling ben uh today that like that's not the workout i would love to have eight days out from a race sure um it's just my legs feel like garbage right now <laughs> right. but um but Falmouth isn't the point. Right. It'll be great to go to Falmouth. It'll be a great opportunity to test myself against some good guys. Um, but what's really going to be like the season defining performance is, is in New York. Yeah. So I'm curious to hear how your training will change in those couple months leading up, or maybe not necessarily change, but evolve 
um, as, you, as you train specifically for New York once, once these races are out of the way. Um, so I don't know how to be, what question I want to ask, but I'm just curious to explore that, yeah. that topic. Um, so I guess it would probably be easiest to like put the backdrop of this coming training against the, or the backdrop being Frankfurt training right, and then right. how New York training will uh, change. Sure. Um, so Frankfurt, we did a lot of really rhythmic stuff. So a lot of work at like being super efficient at a pace and flowing really smoothly and trying to hit, pay attention to splits. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, and that was great because it was a paced race where time was really important. Uh, going into New York, we will have, it'll be more, um, the training will be more specific for New York. So we will have surges. There'll be more hills. There will um, be situations where we have to kind of like close really well. Sure. Um, just be able to like kind of buffer that lactate so that if there's a big surge, you can cover it and then slip back into marathon effort without like really needing, without going too far over the line. Right. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to be getting ready to just race. Yeah. Um, as opposed to really time trial. Sure, sure. Well, we are lucky enough to have Coach Ben just just outside of the viewing window. I might bring him in for a minute. Okay. Come on in, Ben. Here I come. Okay, I'm in. Um, what I think, or an interesting question here, um, in looking at Frankfurt versus New York City, what gets you excited about Scott in particular um, with that race and how that went in Frankfurt and then moving to New York and sort of how that suits him from your perspective. Yeah. As a yeah. Coach. No, that's great. So I think that you want to put as a coach, you want to put the athlete in a, in a situation where um, they can succeed, you know? And so you're looking to figure out what type of athlete you have. And in the marathon, as Scott was kind of alluding to, there's sort of two types of marathons. There's the real fast, flat ones that are paced, yep. and then there's the Boston's and the New York's, um, and, and others, Olympic trials and things that, sure. are, that are not paced and are tactical, and you kind of stand on the line, and you really don't know what's going to happen, right. and you have to be prepared for anything. Sure. But if you look at his career thus far, and his success, even going back to college and cross country, and and the success he's had on the roads, a, a lot of a lot of the the best performances that he's had have been in those tactical, just pure race situations. And so that's New York. So let's put him in a situation where I think he can succeed. Now, the fact that he ran well at Frankfurt to to answer the first part of the question, it, it, that's good. Right. You know, like he said, that that's a great start. Um, and I think we needed that. I don't think you want to. I mean, personally, I think it's it's um, it's easier to to debut in a race like that where you control the variables. We wanted to control right. as many variables as possible, yep. and that's why we picked Frankfurt for the debut. But but since it went well, I think now is the time. You yeah. Know, to do New York, and when you're working backwards from the trials, which we all are, um, you want to have in your back pocket, as you say. Um, all of the different kinds of races that you could possibly have at the trials. Right. The trials could get going right from the get go. Yeah, that's what it did in 2012 when Hall took off, and not we and we have that experience. Sure, uh, it could also be very tactical, like we suspect New York will be. So now we'll have that experience, and then maybe we'll have one more, you know, before before the trials come around. So there's there's a couple of different reasons. I think one, I think it, it fits right now, uh, and two, I think it makes sense as we look forward to the trials. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So. Um D is this something that sort of outlook i guess is that something that you sort of work on together or do you do you think like scott we need to have you ready for all these different variables at the trials here's how i think we should do things or is that more coming from you like i want to be ready for the trials ben what can we do to put me in that position i think it's probably both <clears throat> like if i had my heart set on taking another crack at a really fast time Ben's not going to force me to run New York. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> he might like be like, look, it makes, he would spell out the options, be like, look, it makes more sense to practice what more like what it's going to be at the trials. Um, but I'm sure if I had really sat down and been like, look, I want to crush it at a race like Berlin sure. or Chicago or go back to Frankfurt or yeah. Amsterdam or something where it's like more similar to what we did last time. Um, and I really felt strongly. I'm sure Ben would have said, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Um, but I was on board for New York. I really wanted to do it. And, um, 
Ben had the same feelings, I think. Sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we talked as much as maybe some of the others this fall. I mean, it was. Pr I mean, we were pretty set on it. Yeah. You know, from a long time. Ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. would say. Yeah. yeah. I, I felt like that was going to be the the way to go, and just and we even started working even all the way back to before New York City half on starting to try to because I mean that was one of his takeaways from I would I don't know if you want to already say the first part of your career but just just basically coming to me and saying I'm not handling these surges well right these people are getting mm -hmm. away from yeah. me and it's yeah. annoying me <laughs> because I feel fit and I feel strong and I'm still closing strong there were races where his last K was you know just as good as anybody else's but but he had, he had been unable to cover a, more of a mid race Earlier, or yeah. three quarters of the race move um and so we did we worked on that um leading into new york city half and i thought it paid off mm -hmm. you know he covered the moves very well yep. in new york city only really didn't cover the one of the last real yeah, good ones got real fast and, and yeah. uh that dathan made and yeah. um you know, and then he was the one making the moves sure. the 25k and that's essentially what we talked about was hey We're not just doing this stuff so you can cover moves eventually. We want to be able to make the moves yeah. ourselves. Yeah, um, and so, You know, so I think we're getting there, you know, sure. it's, still, it's still a work in progress, but as he said training wise we'll try to Incorporate a lot of pace change work yeah. and um, we've we started today right today's yeah. session yeah. was very hard Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you got plenty. Of, well, there's a, if that's the start, you've got a lot of time to develop yeah. that, obviously, mm -hmm. before New York. So he talked quite a bit about that change in training from Frankfurt to New York. Um, how will, if at all, the the terrain change that that mm -hmm. you'll have Scott on? Well, yeah, Frankfurt's flat. Yeah, really flat. Mm -hmm. So we actually, I wish we had flatter surfaces to run on, you know. But uh, but for that one, but for right. New York, <clears throat> what we have here in Flagstaff is great. You know, we had a lot of success last year in New York with Kellen getting 8th and Steph getting 10th. Um, and actually, their takeaway was that we probably overdid it. And not not, not to say to, to that it was a detriment. Right, right. But the, basically, with all the different hill stuff that we did, sure. they, they came away from that saying, you know what, honestly, we were more than prepared for the hills. Yeah. The hills aren't that crazy at New York. I mean, there is up and down. And there's always some up or some down. You're very rarely running completely mm -hmm. flat, flat. Right. Um, but that's Flagstaff. That's every day for yeah, us. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. The, the big thing that we tried to do a couple times last year, mentally, physically, whatever, a little bit of both, I guess, is close going a net uphill. Yeah. Because you're, that's what makes, oh, it's one of the things that makes New York very difficult is the last 10K is net up. Right. Because you come over back into Manhattan uh -huh. and, and you're coming down uh, Fifth Avenue and then you have to have a, you have a big climb. Then you get into the park and you have some big climbs. In Slowly the park. rolling up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so people have some nasty last 10Ks yeah. there. They're not good. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so even though those kind of workouts where you're closing that up, you don't get the tangible fast splits sure. that maybe you'd like. Um you know you get tough uh but what, what did we do before uh new york city half we did like a tempo long tempo and the last four were uphill yeah oh mm -hmm. yeah that where did that finish uh it's finished at the start okay. so we did the start yeah. to four miles uh -huh. on lake mary which is very rolling yeah. but net downhill correct right and then we did um 10 miles at like six minute pace yep and then we went from four back to the start so from the first mile on that one was pretty flat the second mile was almost entirely uphill, <laughs> right? And then it's rolling, big down, big up, yep. And then a uh, steady up, yep. back to the start. So, on the wrong day, you'll catch a headwind going yeah. back too. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard workout. It's tough. I don't think we, again, like you know, taking from Stephen Kellen, we don't need to go overboard, but I would like to make sure that we're getting a lot of up and down, yeah. mm -hmm. in the training, so that it's not a shock to the system. Yeah. You know, the last 10k. I think, I think we for sure have one of the long sessions we'll finish that way but i don't think we need to do it every time like today we didn't do that sure um you know so it'll be a mix mm -hmm. it'll be a mix and ben you mentioned um some of scott's success in tactical races historically dating back to college and so forth um scott do you think that a course like new york like that the, the nature of that course where it is very rolling there are plenty of uphills especially later on do, does that cater to your strengths do you think like is that something you look at and you think you know that evens the playing field a little more in my favor or does yeah. that scare the hell out of you or uh yeah i mean i i certainly think it's healthy to be a little scared of the marathon distance sure you have to respect the fact that it's you're gonna be out there for two hours and hopefully about 10 to 15, two hours and 10 to two hours and 15 minutes yeah <clears throat> um and that's not an easy task so you have mm -hmm. to be respectful of that and prepare yourself well for that um, but I think I've found 
that I really excel in races that give you a ton of opportunities to tap out and quit. Sure. Um, I think I'm good at kind of answering that question a bunch of times. Like uh -huh. if you look at the trials 10 K, um, in 2016, like you had every opportunity yeah. to stop and or to, to phone it in or right. to, and nobody really would have blamed you. Like, no. Wait, like how when you have was a race, it, that day? it was like in the eighties yeah. and there was a headwind, there right. was a big wind, like obviously not a headwind cause it's a track. Um, and there were surges and right. I mean, if you look at like Bernard Lagat was in third place and dropped out, like God, that's an absurd that's race, you know, that's so he was brutal. in position to make the Olympic yeah. team with less than 5k to go and God. stopped. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm good at situations where you have to keep going yeah. as opposed to like throwing yourself a little pity party. Right. And, um, I think New York, given the difficult terrain, given the possibility of bad weather um i think i'm that those things suit me because of that that skill sure so so if if it's not a great day you know um or you're having a rough patch and mm -hmm. you get to 20 miles and and you're in you know let's say 12th or something do you how much of your how much of that strength is based on like where you are in the field at that time? Like it, it, in other words, it's easier to keep pushing mm -hmm. if you're in fourth at mile 20 and it hurts like hell as opposed to maybe a little further back than you'd like to be. Yeah. It's certainly easier to have a good day when you're having a good day. <laughs> right. Um, it's a good way to put it. Yeah. But I think I can always, you know, I'm pretty good at turning mediocre days into good days and bad days into mediocre days. Sure. Um, so by just making like, small tangible goals like yeah. uh like if you're in 12th of the new york city marathon it's unlikely that 11th is a minute ahead of you you right. can probably <clears throat> see them or if not it's like okay just get to this next mile like yeah. try to bring it back into like a reasonable time period in this one like i kind of have faith that i'll be able to come back on people um because i've done it a bunch of times right yeah and ben how much of the experience last year with kellen and steph running um for, for, again, from your perspective as a coach, how helpful will that experience be, you know, going into this year with uh, with these guys running? Uh, very, I think, uh, for sure. You know, I, I, I think we got a little fortunate last year because we really didn't work on as much pace change stuff as we're going to work on with these mm -hmm. guys. Um, and, um, you know, I just, it was our first time doing it, right. you know, um, with, with those two. And... Um, I think that we we learned from it because that race went so slow for so long, sure, and then took off. Yeah, and so it and that could happen with these guys too, for sure. And we need to be ready to close. Uh, but I think if you look traditionally at the men's race, there's a lot. You know, it'll be five twelve, four fifty six, five oh eight, four fifty two. You know, just crazy. Yeah. back and forth and back and forth, and that's what cumulatively affects people late in the race right it, again not the hills necessarily not the overall pace from an average point of view sure it's the pace change um so what did i learn from stephen kellen i learned that we got away with one i think <laughs> a little bit because i don't know if they could have handled a lot of that changing sure um uh, but we ran well and so i learned that you know it, at least on the positive side we definitely were prepared for the course yep. for sure the terrain and we were prepared, you know, for the distance and all that good stuff. Um, I just think maybe a little bit more specific on the the way the race is probably going to go. I like it. The, the thing is, it wasn't just last year that we got a lot of good data from Scott Smith and Kellen uh, Taylor in their Boston training. Right. Because their <clears throat> Boston training was very much geared for anything as well. Fast from the gun, yep. tactical with a lot of surges, slow with a big close. I felt like had it been a nice day they were prepared for anything now obviously we weren't prepared for 38 degrees cold and uh, had been, sure uh, sure was anybody else apparently so yeah. um you know it is what it is but right. but i think i think there were some little nuggets from that training block that will transfer over well to the new york block as well sure yeah um i guess we'll wrap up with with two final things i'm i'm curious uh it doesn't sound like this makes sense for for Fable and and maybe it doesn't make sense ever but is there ever a situation from your perspective where you have an athlete in a race like New York and you say we're better off just running 5 minute trying to run 5 minute pace the whole time? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um 
you know, you, you think that sounds good. <laughs> right. And you think that sounds like a good plan You because you look at the results from each year and like, wait a minute, I know what we could do. Yeah. Yep. We could just run five minutes exactly. the whole time. We win this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just so much easier than it sounds yeah. because you're, you're going to be on your own. Like you're going to either have to go out in front and hope they let you go or which they won't. You know, yeah. so that, yep. that that's part yep. of the reason it's not it's not realistic is because if you tried to do that, then everyone would just sit on you. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to be leading 26 miles right. in a row at the New York City Marathon, which is often going to have some wind and things. Yeah. Um, and should they take off a little faster than that, then you're going to be way off the back and you're not going to feel like you're in the race. And you guys just talked about momentum and yep. that's an important thing. Yep. And so I just think... If that was the case, people would have already figured that out. <laughs> right. There's a lot of smart people that have done this thing before, uh -huh. and, and it hasn't. You know, nobody's it's ever been worked. able to pull that off. Right. I think that the podium, the top three finishers come from the front pack. Yeah. Do people come from behind and finish eighth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with finishing eighth. And eighth is great, and we would probably take eighth. But I think try to take a swing for a little hot, little higher. Sure. Sure. You know. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. Is yeah. That fair. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, really, the only person who has ever kind of pulled that off is Meb. And that's because at Boston, they let him go. But he, he wasn't running five-minute pace either. He ran 208. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to be running fast enough to let for people to let you go, you really have to take a risk. Yep. And, you know, maybe at some point in my career, we feel like I'm fit enough to take a risk at New York. And, you know, maybe we could run a, a 440 or something at mile 12 and see what happens. But um, for my first New York, for my second marathon, it makes more sense to me, and I, I think to Ben as well, to his point, to train for the race, um, train for the surges, and just play the game. Yeah. At some point, you gotta just you gotta just kind of go with your strategy, and we're gonna go with um, with racing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I get just to finish up. Then what is uh, what are your expectations? I mean, that's still ways off. You've got mm -hmm. a lot to do between now and then. You'll be in a different place in terms of your headspace, your fitness, etc. Three, two and a half months from now, but. Uh, if that all goes well and you do show up ready to go, what is, what is a, a great day for Scott Fobble look like? I think a like attainable but lofty goal would be top five. Mm -hmm. I think that would be very hard but doable. Mm -hmm. So if I come in top five in New York, I'll be ecstatic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I say that now. <laughs> Maybe I get in the race and I'm battling for top top three and fifth place doesn't sound that good. But, sure, sure, um, sure. But as I say right now yeah. on August 11th, right. uh, <laughs> top five in New York would be spectacular. Yeah. And then like the B goal would be top 10. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And I imagine you... That sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like you've maybe plan. talked about no, this. Before. No, we really haven't. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we're mostly just focused, trying to focus on one week at a time and just keep mm -hmm. getting fitter. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't um, necessarily predict how you're, you know, how fit you're going to be sure. um, two and a half months from now. You just have to take it one or two weeks at a time. Yeah. And I actually like that he's got the two races because that kind of breaks it up mentally a little Definitely. bit as well. And uh, it, 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 he can handle longer segments, which has been proven, uh, which he's proved over time. So I feel good, even though we're, we're getting, you know, we're training pretty hard right now. It's okay. So he can handle it. He's done it many times and we'll, 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 give the proper respect to Great North and we'll take a very, sure. very easy week after that, not only to recover from the travel and the race, but also to recharge for the kind of the, the finishing stretch toward New yeah. York those last six or seven weeks. Um, so I feel, yeah, I love where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it'll be exciting to see how it goes, obviously. So yeah. we'll have to wait a couple months, but... <laughs> I'm Maybe we'll do it again afterwards. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll be back to chat with you here. Definitely. Um, cool. Well, thanks, Scott, for All coming right. on. Ben, for the guest appearance. Thanks, Eric. All right. Yep. Thanks, Eric. All right. See, See you ya. next time. See ya. That's a wrap. All right. Oh,